Hey everybody, I am getting ready to um, put my camera up. I am getting it set up here onto my desk. Let's see, hopefully that is good. My finger's in the way. <laughs> I never know how to have it on here or how it's going to look best for you guys. So we'll roll with that. Sorry if I'm making you seasick. I hope everybody's doing well. Hey, Lou. Thank you. It's going to be fun. I'm excited um, to talk about a few things with you guys. Let me try and find my live feed so that I can see what you guys are seeing. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up on the bottom and you can also share the video. I would appreciate that. Hey Sue, thanks for joining. No problem. Every Tuesday I go live, I just never know how it's going to look on Facebook, so I always have to move everything around. <laughs> and, I mean, not Facebook, on YouTube, because what I see on my phone is not what I see on my iPad. Like, right now, I'm looking at the feed on my iPad, and I can see part of my desk, my glass top. But on my phone, I only see my mat, so I'm trying to make sure that... Um, Everything looks good while we wait for people to pop in. If you're new to my live, please say hi. Let me know where you're from. Hey, Clem. Thanks for being here. Happy New Year for everyone. There is so much going on, guys. I have a million trillion announcements. Like, this time of the year, there's just so much happening at the same time, right? <clears throat> Quite exciting, but also a lot. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so let's go ahead and get into the announcements while people come in. I'm going to be using one of the new stamp sets um, from the mini catalog that goes live on Thursday. I'm really excited um, for the new catalog. It's always fun to get new products to play with, right? We all love that. That makes it a good time. <clears throat> and so let's go ahead and start with Paper Pumpkin. You guys know how much I love Paper Pumpkin. And um, so Paper Pumpkin, the next one, the January kit, you have until the 10th which is on next Tuesday's live will be the last day to sign up if you want the January kit. And if you are part of my VIP group on Facebook, if you are not, you can find it. It's called Kelly's VIP and um, Kelly with an I. And you should be able to find it on Facebook. I have um, a video that I shared from Stampin' Up's website on Facebook that is the year in review of all of 2022's Paper Pumpkins. And it's a really cool one where you guys can see um, the different kits from last year. You don't want to miss out this year. And starting on Thursday, you can buy a subscription to Paper Pumpkin and earn celebration product for doing that. So it's a great time of year, always at celebration time to subscribe to Paper Pumpkin or renew your Paper Pumpkin subscription so that you pay ahead and you can earn some freebies. So um, I always like to talk about that, but it's gonna be a Valentine kit. It's called Locked in Love. And apparently there's this famous bridge where people take locks and lock them and then they used to, toss the keys into the water and so I think they stopped them from tossing the keys because of the environment but um it's just kind of the theme of this kit so lock and key and hearts there's an add-on that you can purchase that make these really cute treat boxes 
and this is available now for Paper Pumpkin subscribers. So once you're subscribed to Paper Pumpkin, you have access to all past kits, refills if we have any, um, and it's a really great way to get um, treat holders. This is gonna be a card kit. So you're gonna get to make nine cards, three each of three designs. You're gonna get th nine coordinating envelopes. You're gonna get a love theme stamp set. You're gonna get um, a fresh freesia ink spot, which I love that color, so I'm so excited to have that in a spot. And then um, the padlock and key die cuts are gonna be mix and matching and heartfelt and stuff like that. But the month coordinating heart box is this cute little box here. I'm going to try and bring it up so you can see it a little better from my printout. And it's like a heart shape with a rectangle in the middle that you could put treats in. Um, you get 10 heart shaped boxes with um, key shaped stickers. The finished box is three inches by four inches, so it's a decent size. Um, the coordinating colors for it are petal pink with gold foiling, and then um, it's $11. And I can give you the item number if you're interested. It is item number 162417. So don't forget about that, because um, the add-ons are always fun to take your kits to the next level. Um, don't forget about kits collection. You guys know that there's always new kits. And one started on December 7th. I'm not sure if I have talked about it in the live, but it's $21 and it's a love treat kit. And they look like cute little envelope boxes. The stamp set is adorable that goes with this kit. And it's available in the um, store already. You get 20 treat boxes for $21. And they're three by two and uh, 15 sixteenths. So almost three by three. Uh, well, I don't know, two and fifth. Yeah, three by two by 15 sixteenths. That's the thickness. So they're like an inch fat, three inches long ways and two inches the short way. So those are, are really cute. You can see kind of here how they open like an envelope. And that's kind of cool. I like that they're a little different. We also have this masculine set that became available in November and it's a really cool one. What people don't realize are the stamp sets that come with these kits. Once you're done putting everything together and even if you've sent the cards out, you still have these amazing stamp sets that come in these kits. You're also getting ink. You're also getting a block in all of the kits collection. Um, so that's really cool. When it's a stamping kit, you get the stamp block to go with it. I'm not sure if the birthday organizer kit is restocked, but that is a really cool one because you get 12 birthday cards and then you get this cool eight by 10 monthly planner that you can put in the pockets, the cards for all year to send out for birthdays. So that's the announcements for that. I wanted to let you guys know about the mini catalog <clears throat> that goes the July through December, it's still available with Last Chance products. Now, a lot of things have sold out, but there's still plenty of really great deals, up to 60% off some of the things in here. And um, you can order from here through tomorrow. So you have tomorrow's the last day. So if there's anything that you have missed out on or that you wanted to get from this mini, you have till tomorrow to do that, so don't regret it and then wish you had bought it. So check that out. The new mini, I can't open it. I can only show you the outside, but if you wanna see some of the products, I have an unboxing video already on my channel that you can check into um, where I open my big box of all the things that I ordered, which was um, a lot. <laughs> so there's plenty for you guys to see in there and it's also celebration starting Thursday and these are the freebies and I showed the freebies that I had already gotten as well in that big haul video on my channel so you can check that out it is available and then again don't forget annual catalog products are also very cool um, the embellishments that I'm using today on our cute card this is the card we're making these embellishments are in the annual catalog. So um, there's lots of great things in there. Of course, that's where our adhesive is and all of our main products, ribbons, dies, embossing folders, and such. 
so don't forget about the annual catalog. Next Tuesday, I will be able to open this book and show you all the things and refer. If you need a copy of the mini catalog and you requested me to be your demonstrator, you should have gotten it in the mail. If you are a customer of mine that have, has ordered in 2022 and did not get this, please let me know so that I can get Stampin' Up! to resend it out if you have not gotten yours. All right, I think that's everything. We're gonna make this cute card. I designed this card for the tutorial bundle. Now, for those of you who don't know, um, when you order from me and you spend $50 in a month, you get um, a tutorial bundle of products. The January tutorial bundle, I'm gonna look and see how many projects is in it. If you give me a second, I can find it. Um, but the January tutorial bundle has, I think 30, it's either 33 or 36, which is pretty cool, um, projects. Let me see how many it has. 36 projects. This is one of the projects and it's a PDF form. It gets emailed out to you with any $50 purchase. So there's 36 projects in this month's um, tutorial. So any purchase in January, um, I will send that out to you at the beginning of February. And this card is, is the one that I made for the tutorial bundle. So I'm gonna teach you guys how to make it today. But even though I'm giving you a sneak peek with this, you'll have 35 other projects in that tutorial that you won't know about that'll be a surprise that you can learn how to make so that will be super awesome and cool so <clears throat> i'm using the taco fiesta stamp set which is a really adorable stamp set it is available starting thursday in the new mini catalog that goes through april I've also paired it with the Hive 3D embossing folder. This is what it looks like. This is what it does. This really cool texture in the background is that Hive 3D embossing folder. So we're gonna use that today. We are also using the scallop contour dies. You guys know how much I love these dies. I've used them hundreds of times. And we're gonna use the third smallest die, or the third from the biggest, third from the smallest, there's five, so it's the middle one. Um, and that's what I used to attach my little tacos onto my card. So let's go ahead and get started and I will show you how to make this cute taco fiesta card. <laughs> now, I didn't put anything on the inside, but we are going to do that today. I've decided I want to put the little burrow or the little pinata guy on the inside. And I want to talk to you a little bit about the stamps in this set. It has really great puns, which I love a great pun in a stamp set. It has these adorable little faces that you can put on the nachos, on the um, guacamole bowl, the taco, the, the chili pepper, and I'm going to be doing a class with this set. So if it's something that you like, definitely look forward to at some point between now and April, I will be doing a class with this taco fiesta, but it is a really cute one. And so um, it has some cute sayings, holy guacamole, it's your birthday. Today we're going to use this spec taco lure saying. And what I wanted to show you is when we have photopolymer stamps, which is what, is what these are, they're see-through stamps. But because they are not red rubber, they're pliable, so we can bend them. And that's what I did here to do the spectacular saying on the front. I've bent this straight saying into a curve, and we're gonna, I'm going to teach you how to do that today. So we're gonna learn how to do that, which will be fun. I'm just gonna toss it on here temporarily onto my block. Let me get some um, white, basic white. I have my burrows here, my little pinata burrows. I have one um, burrito, which is all I need. I need to do some tacos and we're gonna use the Memento Tuxedo Black ink. So I'm gonna go ahead and stamp 
two of those. The burrito is done for us. Where is my stamp cleaner? I'm gonna just push that to the side before I stick my finger in it. We'll clean that. The burrito is gonna get a little mustache face. You can see on here, he has a little mustache face. I think this is such a cute stamp set. I don't know where everybody is today. Hopefully they'll join us eventually. I'm gonna go ahead and put his little face on there. Isn't that so cute? <laughs> My gosh I love these little faces I just find them so adorable and there's a variety of faces there's five different little faces so this little face is going to go on one of these tacos and I'm going to do a different face on the other taco so that you can see three different faces on these <laughs> they just make me laugh they're so cute Okay, so let me teach you how to do that spectacular <laughs> word. And I'm going to grab just a, a thin scrap. We don't need these big ones. Let me grab my paper snips and cut these guys off. All right. So on this thin piece, I'm going to go ahead and move. So here is my straight um, stamp. Now, what I'm gonna do is I wanna curve it. So I want the S to be up and then I want it to kind of have a wave in it. So when I lay it, I'm gonna stand up and do this so that you guys can see it a lot closer in the camera. Okay, so here's my block. It's not very clean, is it? I need to clean this block. But So I'm gonna start my stamp like this and I'm gonna manipulate it into a curve and then I'm going to manipulate this piece into a curve. Hey sis, so see how I took that straight stamp, hopefully it's not blurry, it may be, let's see if it will, um... I'm going to do it one more time for you guys. Okay. So we're going to take this S section and we're going to lay it down and I'm going to hold it and then I'm going to angle that part down and then I'm going to wiggle this part back up into place and it will be curvy. Can you see that? So you can curve it like that. Now you can see it's moving on me, but it will stay long enough for you to be able to stamp your sentiment. So I'm just going to press it down real good. We're going to go ahead and ink that up. You'll be able to see it a lot better now that I have it with this ink on here. And I'm going to stamp it down onto this little scrap and see how it's curved. So you can manipulate your photopolymer, the clear stamps. You can't do it to the red rubber, but you can do it. And then when you pull it off, it goes back to being straight. Yeah, it's a great way to use your photopolymer stamps in a different way. <clears throat> so let me cover this and we'll get to coloring. We're going to do a little coloring, a little fussy cutting, a little fun. Okay. All right. Let's see. We'll start with our taco and our burrito. So the tacos, I wanted them to look like they were a crunchy taco, and this is our soft taco. So, you know, the soft tacos are a little bit lighter colored than the crunchy ones that have been heated up and deep fried, right? So um, I did two different colors. So I used Daffodil Delight for the 
um, darker, crunchy tacos, and so saffron for the burrito. So we'll start first with the burrito, and I'm gonna use light so saffron, and I'm gonna go ahead and go over the entire burrito, or burrito, I mean soft taco, I keep calling it a burrito. Some, I mean, it does kind of look like a burrito too, but it's also, a soft taco. I'm using it as a soft taco today. So you can see I'm using this lighter color. I'm gonna see if I can bring my camera down a little so that you guys can see a little better. And then I'll try and bring it back up once I'm done. How's that guys? Let me know if you can see a lot better like that. So I'm just going over that little soft taco and then I'm gonna take my dark so saffron and see these little dots that are right there. I'm gonna use my dark so saffron and I'm gonna kind of go over those little areas to kind of give it a little bit of color. And I'm also going to run that darker so saffron along the lines that the artist drew that taco. Okay, so that one's done. Now we're gonna use Old Olive to do his lettuce that's sticking out the top here. So I'm gonna use light Old Olive first and I'm gonna color the entire piece. And then I'm gonna take the dark and I'm just gonna, you know, lettuce isn't all one color, right? It's not one color green. I'm just gonna kind of wiggle that on in different places and then I'm gonna blend it in with the light go back over the top so that it looks like one continuous piece but it has some variation so there is that while i have the light um old olive out i'm going to go ahead and work on the lettuce sticking out of the taco and i wanted it to look like there were some tomatoes also sticking out so these ruffly pieces i pretended that those were lettuce and these rounded pieces i pretended that that was tomatoes but you can make it all lettuce if you want to. It's your tacos and you can color them any way you want. This is just what I chose to do. So I started with the light and then I'm gonna blend in a little bit of the dark, same way that I did with the other, not all over, just here and there along that light color. And then I'm gonna use the light to blend that in to, so it doesn't look like a stark line and it'll blend it all together and then we'll have some variation of color on the taco. So even on these small little parts and pieces, you can still do a little bit of two-tone. I mean, if you don't wanna get that complicated, you don't have to. Like I said, you can do yours any way you want. All right, so now on to the tomato pieces. So we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use just the dark um, for the tomato. So I'm just gonna add that on along here. And this is Poppy Parade. I don't remember if I told you guys what I was using for the red. So just adding a little Poppy Parade. And then we're gonna color our tacos with the daffodil. So for the daffodil delight, I'm going to use the light first and I'm going to color all the shell. I like to go around the outer edges first and then um, pull the color so that I don't, um, so I have kind of like a guide so I can color quickly. Once I've done that outline, I can color a lot quick, quicker. So that's that we're going to start with that i'm doing the same thing here i'm going to go over and around it first and then we're going to color it in 
I love coloring um, with these Stampin' Blends because it's so fast. If you haven't ever used them, you should try them out. They're awesome. Just start with a couple colors and work your way. Every time you order, you can just get another pack and build your collection like that. So I started with the light Daffodil Delight, but I want to add um, a little bit of the fried element, the darker color of my taco. So I'm gonna go around the edge and I'm just gonna add that darker color back and forth, but it, it will be a little bit sketchy, not completely filled in. Same here, I'm just gonna go and I realized that I needed um, some new blends. So I did get a new pack of these daffodil. I just haven't pulled them out yet. I've been doing a lot of coloring when I, when I designed this class. So right here where these dots are, like around the edges here, I wanna add a little bit more color because when you heat these tacos up, right, they are always around the edges a little darker just to give it a little shading. I'm gonna do the same thing to this one. Go around the edges, give it a little bit more color. What do you guys think of this stamp set? Do you think it's cute? I love it, I think it's precious. I'm gonna use my light daffodil to blend all of that out so that it's not sketchy and it's all one color. All right, <clears throat> I don't know what color we're gonna make these um, pinatas. I guess we're just gonna use the same colors. So I guess I will start with the saddle. Let's do the three colors along here. One, two, three, and then this will be this color. And we'll put this little guy on the inside of the card. So I'll do both of them at the same time. I, I do like that um, it's really easy to color with these blends. You can see that I put that green in the wrong spot, but I'll put a red there and hopefully it'll blend it out. That's the cool thing about these um, blends is that they do blend color so even if you make a mistake like how I did that red will take over that green so it's it's very forgiving now if you do get a dark color and then it's a light color like I'm going to put this yellow and it's going to be lighter I might have a problem there where I bled in but we'll see um there is a color lifter I'll show you that it's a white clear um piece and here where I ran over that line, I can fill that color lifter in there and try and drag some of that color out. And it's kind of cool because it kind of erases it. It doesn't completely erase it, but it definitely fades it enough that you can put a color over the top of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and see if the yellow shows. I'm gonna start with my dark daffodil. Yeah, pretty good. It blended it out pretty well. All right, let's do this one. And then we'll make these little pieces here. I'll make the tail the same color. And we'll do red or poppy parade around the neck here. I just have to use just barely tap the tip. The nice thing about these blends is that it doesn't take much coloring to because they bleed to color a little area. I'm going to do his little ears in the light green, I think. Mm, maybe not. Maybe... Maybe I will do his body in the light green and I'll do his ears and the muzzle in that yellow of his tail. I don't know, I'm just winging it. 
What do you guys think of this? <laughs> I'm just trying to keep the colors the same, but I think it's okay. It's go it's turning out okay. I'm gonna go in between here. That's kind of a little bit complicated, but not too bad. What I love about these blends is usually coloring takes a while, but you can color fairly quickly with them because they do bleed, the color bleeds, and so <clears throat> because it bleeds, it helps you color faster. It just fills the surface or the paper, it soaks into the paper, so. All right, there is, I think he's cute in that color. Let's give him yellow ears. And that little muzzle will make that yellow also. What do you think of him? Cute? I think so. All right, we'll do his little body and then I'll fussy cut. We can start assembling our card. Did you find me pretty easily, Sue? I don't know if you're still on here, but um, did you find me pretty easily when you looked for me through um, the search on YouTube? Aw, thanks. Yeah, he's so cute. I wanted to thank everybody who um, subscribed to my channel. I'm really blessed that I hit the thousand subscriber mark this year. Well, in 2022, it was my goal to reach it. In 2022, I really started concentrating on YouTube in um, 2022. And it was a goal in the back of my mind um, as I started gaining subscribers at first, I didn't think I was going to get any subscribers and I thought, Oh, I'll never even get to a hundred. And, um, then I got to a hundred and then little by little, I just kept going up and up. And then I thought, Oh my gosh, maybe I can hit a thousand by the end of the year. And I made it a goal and I was really blessed and you guys um, subscribed and helped me out and I was able to reach it and I'm so grateful for all of you who did subscribe. Um, I hope that um, you continue to enjoy my content. <clears throat> all right, let me start fussy cutting these guys out. Yeah, I used to be on Facebook. I used to do Facebook Lives, and now I just do them on YouTube. Now, I am considering at some point this year getting a streaming software where I can stream to both places so that people that prefer Facebook can watch me on Facebook, and then those who prefer YouTube can watch me on YouTube. So it is something that I am considering. I do want you guys to know that I'm really slow fussy cutting. Um, I have carpal tunnel and um, last, well in 2021 in November, I went to a hand specialist for it and he told me that we should try some injections and see how those worked out. And they worked really well and the carpal tunnel pain went away completely. And then in November, this past November, right before Thanksgiving, I started having pain. I would say probably mid-November. I started having pain and numbness in my hands again. And my right thumb, I'm right-handed, is completely numb. I really can't feel the pad of my thumb at all. <laughs> and I do have an appointment, but it's not till the 24th, so... I hope that you guys will bear with me. It's one of the reasons that I haven't really been posting a lot of YouTube videos, but I will again be posting. I'm getting ready to start a beginner series on YouTube and it's gonna have lots of beginner videos to help people get started, just basic things that people don't think about that have been stamping for a long time. And, um, and then I will add techniques and, and the like onto my channel in addition to just my regular um, videos on the stamp sets that I am making projects for. 
Now, I still have availability in my um, stamp club in the mail, which starts in January. And I have the deadline is the 5th. So on Thursday is the last day to sign up. Um, I'm going to be closing it and putting in the order for the products. We are going to be using Love for, I think it's called Love So Much bundle. Um, for those of you who have the mini catalog, it's on page 11. And I have openings for everybody, not just um, non Stampin' Up. Stampin' Up demonstrators can take it. I have a PDF option where you can purchase the PDF. I have a um, option for my team. And I have an option if you already have the bundle. So I have a few options available for you guys. So I hope um, that if anybody is interested in that Stamps in the Mail class that you will check it out. I will be putting a video out on YouTube tomorrow at some point. I will film it and then post it about what projects we will be making and a little blurb about it. And I'll have all of the sign up information um, in the description of that video. So definitely check that out. If you are just joining me and watching on a replay and you are not a subscriber, please subscribe. Um, I am live every Tuesday at eight o'clock Eastern Standard Time. <clears throat> and we have a good time on here. So I would love to have you join us. I think I'm gonna do some fun things this year. I would like to do a bingo, maybe a bunko. Um, so I have a lot of ideas that um, are probably gonna be happening. For my local people, I am gonna be starting um, something called Card Fiesta and it's going to be kind of like um, a shoebox stamping where you come and make a card and it's going to be at a Mexican restaurant, which is why I'm calling it um, Card Fiesta. And I think that that will be a lot of fun. On Saturday mornings, it's going to be really low cost. And it'll just be a way for people to come and um, meet other people that like to stamp. And hopefully I will gain some new customers from that. So if you have anybody local in Virginia, let me know. I would love to let you know about that and you guys could come. That would be super fun. All right, so there's my tacos. There's my burros, my pinata. And now I'm gonna show you how I cut this. Now, I cut it with little flag ends. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna trim that end right there and I'm just gonna leave it longer and then I will show you how I flag that at the end. I'm following the curve. This one of course is going to be different than the last one because I curved it differently. I didn't leave it on there because I wanted to be able to show you guys how to do this. And now I'm going to hold on to this teeny tiny piece. I'm sorry I'm slow with my fussy cutting. Like I said my finger is hurting, but after the 24th, I should be golden again for a while. I'm hoping that it lasts another year. If I get lucky, it will. The, if I can prolong that surgery, I will, because it'll have me out for a good six weeks or so, and that's a lot of planning to keep you guys occupied with stamping while I can't stamp, so. We'll see what happens. I know I have great customers and great people that would help me if that were the case, but um, the longer I can prolong it, of course, the more I will. <laughs> all right, so there's all of our parts and pieces. Let me toss every all my trash in the trash can. All right, <clears throat> let's go ahead and bring out my supplies to put this card together. All right, I'm going to bring you guys back up for a minute. So if you get seasick, I'm sorry, but I just need to have a little room. I'm going to be showing you um, how to do the book binding portion. I'm going to move the blends out of here and we'll bring in my Simply Scored 
Let's make sure you guys can see it on the camera. <clears throat> Let me know if you can. The um, Simply Scoreboard is a pretty cool um, thing. Let me bring this up a bit more. All right, hopefully I'm not making you guys seasick. All right, can you guys see it? I'm going to grab my stylus, which, by the way, comes on the bottom here. And it just sits in there when you're not using it. So we're going to go ahead and score. We're going to score in two places for a book binding card. So you're going to, this is a four and a quarter inch by 11 inch piece of pear pizzazz. And we're going to score it at five and a half inches and at four and a quarter inches. So it's an easy measurement to remember because when we make cards, if we cut them the long way like this, we always score the card in half at five and a half. And then if we cut the card the other direction, like for instance, like this, then we score at four and a quarter. When you do a book binding card, you score in those two places at four and a quarter and at the five and a half inch mark. So that's what we need. So I'm gonna go ahead and move that. We're gonna go ahead and burnish with our bone folder. So I'm gonna use these pieces and I'm going to make sure that we are even and lined up. And then I'm gonna do this score mark as well. I'm gonna bring that back and give that a little score. All right. <clears throat> So this is what we have when the card opens, it opens like a square on the inside. So this paper that we're using here is Design a Daydream. It is a host pack of paper and it is out of our annual catalog. So in the back of the annual catalog, there's this paper pack that's back here that you can earn for free if you host a party you could have a catalog party, you could host a class, you could host a kit collection class, but this is available with $150 party sales. You can choose this item. It costs $18, but not out of actual dollars. It's a freebie. So it comes out of your Stampin' Rewards and you get 10% back up to the first um, $299 that your party is. So if your party was like, let's say $250, you would earn $25. And then this could be one of the items that you pick. And it's a beautiful pack. It has 48 sheets of designer series paper. And it is the paper that I used here to do this particular um, scalloped contour. This one right here, cut that one out. And then this piece is one inch by four inches, and it's gonna go right here on the book binding section. So I'm gonna grab my silicone mat. That's the back side of the paper. We're gonna go ahead and put some <clears throat> multi purpose. We're gonna attach that onto the binding part. All right. <clears throat> and then this is the Hive 3D embossing folder. So when you get it, you take your, this is a four by four piece of Mossy Meadow. You're gonna stick that piece into your folder and then you crank it through your die cut machine and when it comes out, it has this really awesome texture. Isn't that so cool? I loved it and I thought it was perfect for this card and it mimicked this design. So I thought it looked really good in this dark color. So we're gonna go ahead and put some adhesive. I'm gonna use the same one 
the multi-purpose. I love this glue and it put in it, you want it to fill in all these little nooks and crannies. I always use this adhesive whenever I'm using an embossing folder because I think it works really well with them. Because when it falls into those little nooks and crannies, it makes it a lot easier for this piece to adhere onto your card. So I'm just gonna go ahead and give it a little press, give it a second to grab. So there's that piece. We're gonna get our little scalloped piece on top and we're gonna add our little tacos. So they're gonna be glued straight flat on here. So let's go ahead and move the card out of the way. I'll bring my mat in. And we'll glue these little guys onto. So I'm going to go ahead and use the same multi-purpose adhesive. I love this adhesive as well because it gives you a little bit of wiggle room. I'm going to grab a tweezer. We're going to start with this one. We're going to put them about right there. Angle him slightly. And just make sure he grabs. Then I'm gonna add the other taco on the other side. So cute these guys are. <laughs> this is such an adorable stamp set. Okay. Oops, sorry, I'm moving my, um, my mat around on you guys. So now our little soft taco, we're gonna use Stampin' Dimensionals. So I'm gonna put two of those. And you guys know I love the Take Your Pick tool to take the backs off, then they end up in my trash can and not, not on my craft room floor. Okay, so there is our soft taco. I'm gonna go ahead and throw these in the trash. Now, this is also gonna be raised up. So when you use your dimensionals, you can see I'm almost done with this. You have this little edge. And I love using the edge pieces, which is what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna take my paper snips and I'm gonna cut just real thin strips. I'll grab these three for right now. I don't know if I'll need any more, but I'm gonna go ahead and lay those on the back of this wiggly piece that I have stamped. Three is perfect, I think. So I always save the edges and I use them for things like that. So let's get that out of our way. And I'm gonna use the same take your pick tool. I'm gonna hold on to it and I'm gonna pull the backs off of this cool little spectacular sentiment. <laughs> We're gonna put that right down here underneath that soft burrito. How cute is that? I think it's precious. So now we're gonna use dimensionals on the back. So <clears throat> I'm actually going to use the edges and I'll show you this part. I don't know if I have one open, that's what I'm searching for. On my desk I have all, I have this little container that has all my, um, I use so much adhesive that I go through it, but I guess I don't have one started. So we'll start with this. I'm gonna use these pieces on the side. And just by cutting that, I can pull them off of the backing and use those to adhere my piece as well. So definitely get your money's worth out of your dimensionals. So I have six of those on the back. <clears throat> Let's put that away. And again, I'm gonna use my take your pick tool to pull the backs off. I love this because see how they all stay stuck right onto this piece and then I can just put it right in the garbage. All right, so let's go ahead and attach this onto the front. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. Now the ribbon that I used is from this Old Olive and Sahara Sand Twill ribbon combo pack and I use the old olive but I think this time I'm going to use the Sahara sand color 
Mm, no, I think I'll, I'll use the old olive. I'm gonna just go with what I have. I was almost, I almost got adventurous, but I really like the monochromatic look of this card. So let's just keep rolling with it. I'm opening it. Here we go. All right. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to open this piece and I'm gonna tie it around this book binding portion. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring this around. And I'm gonna trim, let me grab my ribbon scissors. I'm gonna trim it about right there. I love our ribbon so much. It's such good quality ribbon and it just ties so well. Now bear with me again. Remember I have numbness in my thumb. <laughs> so if I don't tie this well, you just have to forgive me. <laughs> but I'm going to do the best I can. I think I was pretty generous with the ribbon, so I should be okay. I'm going to use my tweezers to help me get it through since my thumb is not working very good. Hopefully that there we go. All right, and we're gonna pull that taut right there. I love it. And now before I glue it down, I'm gonna slide that knot up a little bit. I want it about right about there. And I'm gonna just make sure that I pull these ends so that my ribbon lays nice and flat. There we go. I'm gonna actually give it another knot because I want it to be a nice fat knot on top. Now, if you are putting this in the mail and you're not handing it in person, you might not want the knot to be that fat because it may cause a problem when you mail it. But if you're hand putting it in person, it should be fine. I'm gonna go ahead and trim my edges. Cut this one a little bit shorter. All right, let's get rid of that. All right, now we're going to open our card and we are gonna put adhesive on that little panel on the inside. So I'm gonna use the wet adhesive again. So I'm just going ahead and putting it in there. I'm actually gonna put some even on the ribbon. And we're going to push this down and then I'm just gonna press that piece and kind of go under here and press that into place like that. And I'm gonna grab a mini glue dot for this side while we're waiting for that piece to grab underneath. So I'm gonna grab my take your pick tool and I'm gonna pull one of these little guys off. I think I have a Jasper here. Oh no, it's not. It must just be part of the glue. And I'm gonna put this under this knot. I'm gonna just lay it under there and then I'm gonna press the knot down into it so that it doesn't move. And it kind of stays where I want it. And then this should already be held in place just fine. So let's go ahead and open our card. Yep. I just have to hold it a little bit right here. You can kind of just open it and just make sure that your adhesive is nice and down. So we're gonna go ahead and put our little um, pinata burrow on the inside. I'm just gonna use the same adhesive. I'm gonna put it on both of these cards because I don't have one on the other one on my sample. So let's get both of these guys. This is such a cute card. And then you have plenty of room in there to put your sentiment or put whatever note you want to um, tell whoever you are giving your little card to. So cute. Let's put it in this one. And then we'll put our embellishments on the front and we will be good to go. <clears throat> All right, so we're gonna use these um, embellishments for this card. 
they are the solid faceted gems. They come in some pretty great colors. Aren't those nice? Looks like Starry Sky, Balmy Blue, I think that's Blushing Bride, Melon Mambo, Pool Party, and Mossy Meadow. That's off the top of my head, so don't quote me. I could be completely wrong. <laughs> Not sure, but it's possible. All right, put that away. And let's grab my take your pick tool again. I love this little tool. And so we're going to go ahead and we're going to grab a large one of these. We'll put it up here in this corner. And then I'm going to put a small one down. And then I'm going to do another large one in this corner here. That looks pretty good. What do you guys think? I'm very happy with this card. I think it turned out cute. And don't forget that if you place a $50 order in my online store, the link is in the description of this video to go to my online store, you will get a tutorial bundle that will have 36 projects and it will have step-by-step -step instructions on how to make them. I always have a free tutorial bundle. Every month it's different. Some months it's 20 projects, some months it's 30, some months it's 40. Um, I've had, I think, as much as 44 or 46 projects in a month before. So you get quite a nice package. Those of you who have gotten those, do you like getting those tutorial bundles? I hope so. If anybody has joined us late, feel free to let us know where you're here from. I would love to say hi to you if it's your first time watching me. And I do appreciate you guys being here with me. I'm going to toss all my supplies into the basket next to me. Don't forget um, that tomorrow is the last day to order from the last chance list which is the items from this mini catalog. There's still quite a bit of stuff left on the clearance rack. And then on Thursday, you can start ordering from the new mini catalog and earn free products from the celebration brochure. So not only this month do you get this really awesome um, deal where you get free product with the $50. You'll get my tutorial bundle. You'll get my customer card of the month. And the customer card will be up on my blog on the 14th. So you'll be able to see January's customer card. Um, I don't know what that one's going to be yet. I haven't designed it. There's also a really fantastic joining special if you are interested in joining Stampin' Up! and being a part of my team. My team does get my classes at a discount. Um, one of the options includes this super adorable Boho Blue Mini Stampin' Cut and Emboss Machine. It's so cute. Um, there's three options. I recommend this one with the mini machine. You would get um, $175 of your choice of Stampin' Up! products for $129 plus this machine, which is a $63 value. You can also get it in white if you choose and you don't want the blue one. Um, or if you join my team and you don't want the um, mini Stampin' Cut and Emboss machine, you can also get $175 of Stampin' Up! product for $99. No shipping. It's just, it's the best deal in the whole catalog. So if you're going to spend $100, you might as well be part of my team because there are so many benefits and it's lots of fun to stamp together and be part of a stamping community. So if anybody has any questions about that, feel free to um, send me a message. I appreciate it if you guys would give me a thumbs up on my video and share it if possible. I would love that. Um, I hope that you guys enjoyed this card and I will see you next Tuesday at eight o'clock. Watch out for tomorrow, my video for my um, love for you. Um, 
stamp card in the mail class, I have four options. So you can already own the bundle. You can either get the bundle from me, you can get the PDF only. And then if you join my team, you can also get the um, team option, which is option number four. So thanks again. I will see you guys next week. If anybody doesn't have any questions, I'm going to go ahead and let you go. No problem, Sue. I really appreciate you being here. I hope you guys have an awesome night. And thank you for um, being part of my live. This is Kelly with Inky Hands Warm Hearts. Happy stamping!